Hello everyone, welcome to another video on cloud computing. Today let's learn about one of the hot topic of cloud computing that is Amazon's S3 storage. It's also called S3 buckets. S3 stands for simple storage service and it is one of the core offerings of Amazon. Let's look at it in detail. S3 offers secure and highly scalable environments to store object-based files. This kind of auto-scalable infrastructure has provided great opportunities for many companies like Dropbox. Dropbox utilizes S3 infrastructure to create file storage for each of its customers and they paid as and how they increased the number of users but they did not have to change any of their infrastructures or add any servers. S3 lets you store files anywhere between a single byte to 5 terabyte in size. It offers unlimited storage and auto scales to meet your needs. It offers different ways in which you can manage your files or objects on S3 including um, command line interface or API interface, browser based uploads which also supports multi-part uploads. By default all these buckets are private uh, hence they are not publicly shared unless you explicitly share them. These S3 buckets can also be used to host your static websites. When we say static website you can only use HTML and those kind of files but you cannot have any kind of server side processing such as a PHP or a JSP in which you have a web server running that processes server side code and renders it renders your HTML that cannot be done but there are ways to still do a serverless programming using Ajax and other uh, programming techniques probably I'll cover that in detail in another video it supports versioning and it can keep track of all the changes you have done on the same file. It also has lifecycle management in which you can move the less frequently utilized files onto archival and then maybe cold storage which can be accessed only when needed uh, to save a lot of money. It supports encryption and also has logging to track all the changes that are done to the files as well as the access related logging it lets you control the permissions in different ways we will look at all these features in detail with without further delay let's jump on to the demonstration part of this video i log on to my console i'll sign into my account and then i can choose s3 from different places either from all these services I have S3 under storage or I can just search for it search for it which is the easiest way and go to S3 I already have two S3 buckets created here for our demonstration we will create a brand new one all right I click on cre <laughs> create bucket and I give it a name which has to be unique and no one else should have used it throughout all the regions so as you can see your region changed from uh, the region that I was in that is US East to global because the names are global so I give it a Sanjay Kattimani and then I can choose the region in which I want to create my bucket but the name has to be globally unique and then if you already have uh, other buckets and you want to copy the settings from the other buckets you can choose to do so here and then you can go to the next setting versioning do you want to enable uh, versioning or suspend it once you enable it you cannot stop it but you can only suspend it uh, so that it will not keep versioning it any further and then uh, access log and we will come back to those settings in a moment so let's go ahead and uh, create this and create bucket all right so we have our bucket here created so let's get into that and then you can uh, do a couple of things like upload some objects to that or set properties permissions and other things 
Now for this demonstration, I've created three files that I am going to upload in this bucket. The first one is an image and I have index.html that displays the same image and then an error.html page. Let's use the web interface to upload the files. I click on upload and then I can either drag and drop the files here or I, or I can just choose the folder from where I want to upload the files. So here is my S3 files. I select all three of them and choose. They are here and then I upload. I pretty much keep everything default and they become private files. All right, all of them are uploaded. Now if I try to access this file, click on that file and it provides me a URL here. I click on it. It just says access denied. Go back. I need to make it public. It's pri Since it's private, I'm not able to view that file. I make it public and immediately it will be available. It says Sanjay's art gallery at office and it was supposed to show an image here but it's showing blank because that image is not public. Only the HTML file is public. So let's go back and make the whole uh, folder or all files public. I go to more and make everything public. Okay. Now everything should be public. If I go back and click on index.html, it should show me the image as expected. So right now I'm looking at one of the file. Let me go back to the top level bucket and then I can enable the static website. I'll, I'll go to properties and then I have static web, web hosting here. So I choose this, use this bucket to host a website. Uh, the index document I will say index.html. So this is the file I have and I also have error.html. So in case it is not able to serve any content, it will show this error.html. I save this. Now I go back. Sorry, I stay here and here is my URL which has my bucket name HTTP, my bucket name S3 hyphen website hyphen the region in which it is and then followed by dot Amazon AWS. I click on this URL. There it is. So this is the website. Now you can configure your root 53 with the domain uh, with your own domain name and then route the traffic to this page and then uh, everything that is uh, at your domain can get redirected here. For example, you could have uh, sanjaykatimini.com and that traffic can get routed to this page and they will see this content as part of sanjaykatimini.com. I go back, cancel this. I can Once I have this, I can also disable the web hosting. I'll just leave it at that right now. The next thing I want to demonstrate is server access logging. So uh, if you enable this, it can keep storing the log of how many people and uh, who accessed at what time, what pages were served and those kind of statistics. So let's enable and uh, let's store the log also in the same bucket. You can choose to save it in a different bucket, but I'm choosing the same for uh, same same bucket in which it will store the logs also. Okay, we just enable that. If I enable versioning, it will keep track of all the updates that I do. Let's um, update, update one of the file here. So I will update, make a small change in my file. Open this. So let's go to HTML, open it in code. And here I say, at my old office okay i save this content and i come back and i choose to upload the index file next 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 
So this time, although it is overwriting, it will also keep track of the versions of index. So if I choose this file over here, you have different versions of that file. This is the latest version that we just uploaded and this is the previous version. So I can also remove one of these versions and the other one will become default or the current version. It will keep track of the deleted versions too. So that was versioning. The next one is object logging, object level logging, uh, which uses CloudTrail um, and it can keep track of all the read events or write events and those things. Next one is transfer acceleration. So if it is enabled, it will provide you a different endpoint using which you can upload the files. And in order to see the performance difference, you should really look at this. Now it is going to start um, testing it at different regions and then tell you which one is the most optimized region from where you should be uploading the file. So it's been four or five minutes and I have some results. So as you can see, uh, the West region of US is a little bit slower, whereas US West Oregon region is a little bit faster compared to East one. I live in Texas, so this looks like closest to me. I'm surprised to see Tokyo is 28% faster than US regions. Anyway, I'll just stop it here um, and come back to as such, if you're uploading small files like the one I uploaded, uh, probably you will never ever notice any differences. But if you're transferring, uh, let's say 10 GB data, um, customers data or something like that, the performance really matters. Each and every second that you save there will save you uh, minutes or hours together um, when you're uploading huge amount of data. Also, uh, S3 will replicate from the region that you uploaded. It takes from there and uh, it will replicate to rest of them. So this endpoint for your S3 bucket will always be the accelerated endpoint, which will be the fastest route to upload your contents on S3 bucket. Save it. And the next one I want to take a look at is tags. So you can add tags to keep track of uh, the expenses related to this S3 bucket or to categorize it and uh, maybe do various other things such as uh, use it in configuration and all that. So here I just say name Sanjay or something like that. The next one we would like to take a look at is events. So this lets you um, create certain events and then uh, take action based on that. Let's create a simple one, uh, say add to S3, something like that. And I want it to trigger an event whenever object is created in my S3 bucket. Uh, I just say, I'll just leave this blank uh, so that on any of the folder or subfolders, it will apply and say star.csv. I want to take action only on CSV files. Um, this is very useful in case of, um, let's say you have set up a data ingestion pipeline for snow, Snowflake using a snow pipe, uh, in which case you might have created a, um, a SNS topic to uh, kick off or maybe SQS uh, so that it kicks off the queue and that message in turn triggers other actions uh, so that uh, your process can um, then take action on the newly created object. Okay, so if I choose a queue, it will ask me to create a S either create a ARN for SQS queue, or if I choose a SNS topic, it will ask me to create one. Um, so I have already created one for emailing. So this is going to email me back whenever a, a object is created here. You have a few other uh, settings such as uh, encryption, which I'm not going to go into the details and then request pays. This is for um, uh, setting up who will pay for the usage of this S3 buckets. See, it just created a new event for me. I can add other AWS accounts that can get permission on this bucket, either read, write or both. I can give public access to everyone to list the objects or write the objects, uh, read uh, read uh, the buckets. 
you should refrain from giving right object a right permission to your bucket publicly create these buckets carefully and control the access uh, and then uh, the delivery log groups we will not go uh, deep into the uh, those things let's go life cycle can uh, really save you some money um, if you set the rules right and uh, if you are having some files that are uh, infrequently accessed then you can uh, move some of them to glacier which is a very cheap storage uh, but again uh, you will not be able to access the files immediately it will take a few hours so you need to have uh, you need to consider it, uh, the usage of that and uh, maybe you can set up such rules so that you can move certain objects which are not frequently used as i mentioned in the beginning amazon provides different ways to connect to this s3 buckets uh, programmatically uh, one is uh, the command line interface other one is api interface the third one that we looked at is uh, the web interface so with these uh, tools you will pretty much be able to uh, connect through any of your uh, favorite programming interface and i have witnessed uh, plenty of uh, my own applications integrating with s3 in the recent past which truly provides a scalable infrastructure to store uh, customers' files. That's it for today and I hope you liked this video. If you did, please do like this video and also subscribe to the channel to get future updates on newer videos. Thanks.